Hello and welcome to this Wise and Unity tutorial. Today we are going to be looking at attenuations and panning in Wise and how you can use those effects in your Unity project. So to get started, we're going to start off in Wise. So open up a Wise project and go into your actor mixer hierarchy under the audio tab and select the default work unit, right click, hit new child and sound SFX. And for this tutorial to see the benefits of attenuation and panning using something like music or a ambience or something more extended to demonstrate this effect will be very, very helpful. So for this tutorial, I have selected rain. So then once you've made your object, go ahead and find your wave file and drag and drop it onto your new SFX object hit import, import, and then now you are good to go. So on your new object, go to the positioning tab. And if you're not seeing a screen kind of like this, you are, chances are in the sound bank layout if you're seeing something like this. So all I need to do is go up to layout and designer. And then now you should have a screen like this. So select your sound SFX object and go into the positioning tab. And this is where we're gonna be doing all of our panning and spatialization and all those kind of things. So there are a lot of options here and we're gonna go through them all pretty quick. So the center percentage here up at the top is like it sounds, how much of this sound is going to be routed through the center channel. So this is something that's very, very good for if you have, say, an announcer in your game and you're going to want everything that that announcer says to cut through uh, all the mix of the music and all the sound effects and everything like that. So that would be something you would probably want to set all the way up to 100. But, you know, there are a lot of uses for this. And just know that the higher up this number is, the more of this sound is going to be routed through the center channel and the less is going to come out of your left and right or surrounds if you have those. So next is the speaker panning. We're going to leave this for direct to direct assignment. Uh, I'm not going to go into the difference between these two in this tutorial. I will be dropping a link to a lot of documentation regarding all of the stuff in the positioning tab if you're interested in what the differences between these are. But that's a tutorial and discussion for another time. So we're just going to leave this for direct assignment at the moment. Next, you need to make sure you have listener relative routing checked. And under 3D spatialization, we're going to select position plus orientation. And what this means is that it's going to take into account not only the player's position relative to this sound, but also its orientation. So if you are, say, 10 meters away, but you're looking away from this emitter, it will take that into account versus if you're looking directly at it, For, whereas position is only going to take in your position. So we're going to select that. Then under attenuation, make sure you have this checked. Then to the left of this none thing here, click, and then we're going to add new. And you can see that I've already added my rain attenuation. But for the sake of this, we're just going to go ahead and add a new one. So we'll just call this uh, main attenuation. So once you've done that, go ahead and hit edit. And then you should see a screen like this come up. So what this red line right here represents is your volume. So the closer you get to this sound, the higher up the volume will be. And once you are, in this case, 100 units away, the sound will be at 0 or negative 200, so it will be inaudible. But 100 in this case is pretty big, so we're going to lower that quite a bit. We're going to just lower this down to, say, maybe 10. And once you've done that, you can see that the numbers on the bottom have now gone from 0 to 10 instead of 0 to 100. So another thing that you can do that's pretty cool with this is double-click anywhere on the line to get a new point, and then you can click and drag these points around and make your curve or your attenuation settings really as specific as you need them to be. So in this case, we're going to leave ours looking something like that. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this. Uh, well, before I do that, just know that down here, there are a lot of other things that you can play with. If you wanted to add a low pass filter, you could do that, do the, the exact same thing. Um, but we're not gonna go into that. At the moment, we're just gonna worry about the volume. So I'm going to close out of this. So now we have our attenuation set and our specialization settings set. The last thing down here is 3D position. Now, generally, for the sake of keeping things simple, leaving this on emitter will be what you'll generally do. But if you're going to have a sound that is moving around a lot, that maybe isn't attached to a, a specific object, maybe this is going to be explosions going off in the distance, doing emitter with automation will be a helpful thing. So just to demonstrate, I'm gonna select emitter with automation, then click the newly ungrade automation button, hit new, we'll just call it rain path. And now we have some options. We have a random range you can see here. So I'm going to select my path, and then now we can change the left right randomization, the front to back, and the up and down. So just for the sake of demonstrating this, I'm gonna put my left right all the way up to 100, and then now hit play. And you can hear that right now it's coming mostly from the right, even further from the right, even further from the right, and so on and so forth. And if I switch the play type to random, it'll change things even more. So now you can hear it's coming from the left, left again. And this is just a lot of things you can play around with. So this black dot right here, you can set up a path for it to follow. But once again, we're not gonna exactly get into that in this video too much, more than we already have. So I'm just gonna leave this at emitter for the moment. So now once you've done all that, we need to set up a play event for our rain. So go ahead and right click on your rain object, go to new event and play and that will automatically create a play event for us. So that's all we need to do there. And then lastly, we're going to save our project. We're going to go to layouts, sound bank. And if you don't have a sound bank already, that's okay. Go ahead and hit new right here, name your sound bank, and then select the default work unit. You'll have a drop down here and select your main sound bank and we will drag and drop from the event viewer in the bottom left here, our event into the hierarchy inclusion so that our event is now within this sound bank. So last thing we need to do is make sure that you have your default work unit selected and your main sound bank selected, the platforms you wanna generate for selected and your correct language. Then I'm going to hit generate selected, hit close, and then make sure that you have your, your, excuse me, your WISE project saved. Because this is a little quirk, even if you've generated your sound banks, sometimes if your WISE project isn't saved, they won't show up in Unity. So make sure that this little asterisk right here next to your project name at the top is gone. So I just pressed Control S to save, and now that little asterisk is gone. So now we're going to switch over to our Unity project. You can see I've already set up a plane with a first person controller from the standard assets from the Unity asset store. And I've set up an emitter. And if you're here from the previous video, I've gone ahead and made a little change. I've changed this from the AK trigger enter to just start for the sake of this tutorial. So, what we'll need to do now is, if you don't have this, go ahead and right click over here, 3D object cube, and then add a, hit add component, AK ambient. And then that will add this. And then, so just for the sake of this tutorial, since I already have one, I'm going to delete this. But then under your AK ambient object, you will be able to set its behavior and then set the event that you want to use. So you should have, now have your play event. So I'm going to select rain now. And the last thing that we're going to want to do 
is make sure that you have an AK bank object or component on your wise global object and it's select and it's set to load on start. Excuse me. So make sure that your main sound bank is selected. And so now Unity knows that when you start the game, you want to load this sound bank and all the events within it so that you can use them. So I'm going to go ahead and save now. Hit play. And you can hear that as we get closer and further away. So right now I'm outside of the 10 unit range that we specified. But as I walk closer to it, it gets louder. And you can hear that now it's going to the left, it's going to the right, and now it's kind of in the center as we're looking at the object. So that is the basics of panning and attenuations in WISE. If you'd like a deeper dive in this, uh, please let me know. I'm still pretty new to these kind of tutorials, so uh, I'm not exactly sure what people out there want to learn about and see. But um, yeah, so hopefully that helped a lot, and I will see you all in the next one.